Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Next double honors to the head apostles, slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear or whether they forbear. And this is going to be a quick lesson on what's known as the tabernacle of david all right and what this is this is a government that is going to be set up on the earth all right you have the elites of this society all right the uh elite banking families the rothschilds the gettys the bloombergs the eifenhowers and they are attempting to set up a new world order all right but there's going to be a new world order on the right hand side okay that is going to come in and destroy and overtake the uh new world order that the elites are trying to bring in it's a lot bear with me for a second i gotta turn this off okay going back boom all right so as i was saying okay uh this is going to be the tabernacle of david all right this is going to be the government that is going to rule over the earth. All right. As a matter of fact, let's get a scripture on that to start with. Okay. This is what Yahweh Shai is coming to set up, who the word ignorantly calls Jesus. So, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 6. And it reads, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. All right, because that's what he's coming to set up. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. It's a government that's going to rule over the earth in righteousness. It says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. All right. These are titles. It says, verse seven of the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end upon the throne of David. And upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. All right. And that word zeal uh, pretty much goes into the, the um, what's what I'm looking for. Pretty much goes into the, the strong desires of the Lord. All right. His zeal will perform this, this government, all right, the throne of David. All right, as it tells you in Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, that the Lord is going to gather all of his flock all right, together, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, and King David will be king over all of the people. All right, and that's going to be under Yahweh Shai. King David is going to be that number one of the 144,000, right, which is the governing body of the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be the new world order. All right, Because once again, as I said before, the elites, they have their order that they're trying to bring in. But... There's going to be an order that's going to rule over the earth, which is going to be the kingdom of the Israelites. All right. The heavenly father, Yahweh, his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, King David, 144,000 and the men on down. All right. Lord's will would be that number. Now, let's read about it a little bit in the book of Amos, the ninth chapter. And it reads, it says, behold, the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh, are upon the sinful kingdom and I will destroy it. From off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. Okay, and back then, right, that, that wicked sinful kingdom was speaking of, of the Israelites, but today it's speaking of the daughter of Babylon, all right, which is America. All right, his eyes are upon the wicked sinful kingdom, and he is set to destroy it from off the face of the earth by way of nuclear fire, all right, according to the prophecies. Continuing on, it says, For lo, I will command. And I will sift the house of Israel among the among all nations. All right, sifting is like a separation process, like as corn is sifted in the sieve. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All right, so the Lord is not going to allow any of His elect, all right, to be taken down, to be destroyed. Okay, well, you know, I'm not going to say that. Um, the Lord is going to allow certain uh, of certain of the elect to be martyrs for the truth but they're going to be the first to rise with Yahweh Shai all right when he comes okay during that great resurrection now continuing on 
Okay, Amos 9 and 10, but it says, All the sinners of my people, all right, the Lord's people, the Israelites, all right, who are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, okay? So-called, all right? It says, All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, The evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. All right, because that's the mindset of the vast majority of the people, two-thirds, all right, 66.66667%, all right, that's the mindset of the people, the evil that the Lord is getting ready to to, uh, to bring in the sifting process is not going to overtake or prevent them, they're going to, they think they're going to escape it, all right, but that's not going to happen, okay, the Lord said, all the sinners of my people, they who transgress the law shall die by the sword, all right, now continuing on, it says, and in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. All right. So King David, he ruled over the earth. OK, and not just like not over the earth, but he had he had the kingdom. All right. He had his kingdom for, I believe, 40 years. All right. And, um, you know, he, uh, that was a time where the Israelites were sovereign. OK. So in that time, the different heathen nations, all right, they were in fear of King David. Why? Because he had spiritual power. All right. And that's what's going to happen after the two thirds are pretty much getting wiped away. All right. When, when Esau comes in like a flood, the time of Jacob's trouble, the beginning of sorrows. All right. That is the time when you're going to have certain men that are going to receive spiritual powers. All right. And the Lord is pretty much going to raise up Jacob against Esau so that he may do according he may do to Esau according to the anger and fury of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai all right and this is going to usher in the tabernacle of David okay and it says that he's going to build it as in the days of old that they may possess okay Amos 9 and 12 that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name saith the Lord that doeth this okay so this is the doing of the lord all right it tells you in isaiah 14 that the children of israel are going to possess all right possess uh their oppressors in the land of the lord for servants and handmaids all right so they're going to be slaves okay they're going to be a spoil to their servants as it says in zechariah the second chapter now continuing on amos 9 and 13 behold the days come saith the lord that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Okay. It says, And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the way cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make them gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their own land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. Okay, so this is going to be the lifting of the curses. Okay, because this, what it's referring to here in, in those last few verses, the Amos in the ninth chapter, is going to the curses. Okay, how is it that you shall plant a vineyard and not drink, the, or not eat the fruit of it thereof? Okay, you know. You're going to build houses and not be able to inhabit them. All right. But the Lord is going to remove those, remove those curses. Okay. And we're going to have, the Lord's will be that number. Okay. We're going to have the heathen nations in captivity, rebuilding. All right. Edom shall be a possession. All right. And all the heathen round about are going to obey. All right. Now let's uh, continue on. Let's go to the Psalms 18th chapter. And we're going to see, as I said before, King David had spiritual power. All right. And in that day, in that day, all of the elect, all right, or so I, I'm not going to say all, but a select people, all right, select men, particularly of the elect, are going to receive spiritual power, all right. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 12 and verse 8. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as Yahweh, all right, it says as God, so like it, they, the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them, okay, 
and I believe um, let's just check it right quick. That word you go to the blue letter. All right. That word for God is Allahayim. All right, which is the same spirits that were there during the time of the creation story. Okay, they were the same. This was the same word that would translate into God, going back to Genesis. Okay. Yep, here it is. So it says Elohim. It's really Allahayim. All right, let's see what it means. Okay. It says plural of gods in the ordinary sense. So powers. It says very great judges, mighty. And it tells you that they who inherit the kingdom or they who uh, remain faithful are going are gonna to judge the nations. They're going to rule over the earth. All right. It says, um, let's see. Okay. Outline of biblical usage. It says rulers, judges, divine ones, gods, angels. Okay. All right. And um, and the men of the Lord can also be referred to as angels because that word angel really goes into a messenger. All right. So the prophets are the messengers of the Most High. And then you actually have the actual angels, which are spirits. Okay. Now, where was I going to go? Let's go back. Okay. Psalms 18th chapter. All right, and let's see. We're gonna read a little bit about the spiritual power that King David had. Okay, Psalms eighteen, and let's see. Okay, Psalms eighteen and verse twenty-nine. It says, "For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall." Okay, spiritual power. Remember, he killed. King David, I mean, so like uh, King David killed Goliath as a as a young boy. All right, it says as for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in Him. For who is Yahweh that saved the Lord, or who is a rock save our God? It is the Most High that girdeth me from strength with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet. And setteth me upon my high places. All right. And I believe a hind. Let's see what a hind is. I think it's like a deer. So they're very fast. If that's if I'm thinking about it correctly. Okay. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So a hind is a deer. Okay. It says that he makes my feet like hind feet. Very light in the feet. Okay. And setteth me upon my high places. So super speed. It says he teaches my hands to war. So that a bow, a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. All right. So super strength. Okay. It says, Thou hast given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them, neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies that I may destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord. But he answered them not. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. All right, and this is ultimately what the tabernacle of David is going to be. All right, it's going to be the kingdom, okay, the children of Israel. All right, the elect becoming kings and priests. All right. And they are going to rule over the heathen nations with the rod of iron, as it says in uh, Revelation 2 and 26. Continuing on, Psalms 18 and 44. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is the Most High that avengeth me and subdueth the people under me. He delivereth me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. 
Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Yahweh, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore. All right, in Lord's will, we're able to partake in that tabernacle of David. All right, let's get a, let's get a little bit more. Isaiah 11 chapter. So when the Israelites rise up, they receive their spiritual power. All right, the elect specifically. Okay, this is what it says, verse 11 and 13, Isaiah 11 and 13. Okay, this is when they come together. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west, all right, the Hamites. They shall spoil them of the east together, all right, and they shall lay their hand upon Edom, okay, the so-called white man, and Moab, the so-called Chinese, and the children of Ammon, the so-called Japanese, shall obey them, all right. So it's just saying the heathen nations are going to be obedient in the tabernacle of David, and they're not going to have a choice, okay. It says, and the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river. And shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over dry shod. Okay. So alluding to what happened in ancient Egypt. All right. But he's going to destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. All right. And the, we're talk, this is talking about spiritual Egypt here. Okay. So the tongue of the Egyptian sea is all the falsehoods and the lies. All right, he's going to utterly destroy that. All right, with his mighty hand shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over dry shod. All right, let me just see what that word uh, dry shod goes into. Let's see, dry shod, let's see. Waterproof. Hmm. Let's go to the blue letter, see what it means. All right, so he's going to make a way. Okay, he's going to make a way out of no way, just like he did in ancient Egypt, miraculously. All right, so they shall go over dry shod. Let's see what that means. Strong's G5275. Say sandal shoe. Mm. Nah, not good definition, but that's okay, though. Anyways, last verse, Isaiah 11 and 16. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, <clears throat> the remnant of Jacob, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. All right. So this this highway, all right, this, this way the Lord is going to make is going to be for the remnant of his people, all right, which shall be left and scattered from all over the four corners of the earth. All right. But... With that being said, that is the tabernacle of David. Okay, the children of Israel ruling over the earth. All right, a, a new world order in righteousness, though. All right, and the heathens being subdued and in, in captivity, forced to live according to the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which will create a righteous society. All right, so I'm going to close out with that being said. All praise, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, Shalom, and on to the next one.